Hello, my friends. Welcome to New Kids with a Shop, brought to you by the Arcade Comics Collectibles and Games, located in a very moist Fort Wayne, Indiana. I am Matt Cade. And I am Craig Gray. And this is Wonder Woman. Hey, everybody, welcome back. This episode is called Wonder Woman. We are joined today with Shane Pace. Glad to be here. And whoop, whoop. Steve Eric. Hola. Whoop, whoop. And we so, all just got down. Yes, we did. So this is going to be a female creator and female character focused episode. But first, we're going to get to the news. Um, uh, we've had some, a few announcements in the past week or so that are somewhat related. But this one's not compl- related at all. But I feel like we have to discuss it since it's relevant. And that is we've had two now Zack Snyder, like little Very cryptic cryptic yeah. tweets. We have a, what, a picture of Darkseid. It was a transmission from Darkseid. Yes, transmission was, from yeah. Darkseid <laughs> and something involving Henry Cavill. He said he had an announcement. Yeah. So. so what are you guys thinking? I don't think Darkseid would be his own hype man, but I'm very... I, I mean, at first, wet, just with the dark side thing, I was like, okay, maybe they're going to let him finish it in comic form. His uh, That is ex- my exact thought. It was um, like a Buffy season eight deal. Yeah, yeah. Yep. But then the Cavill thing. So now if they do finish it in, cal- in comic form, it'll be awesome. But uh, what if a they little just, bit of a come down. What if, they, what if they just do it in show form? What if they do, what if they do a live action show? What on? if they did another episodic thing like with the uh, Snyder Cut would be awesome. If, if anything live action came out of it, I, I would consider us all blessed. I don't think we hurt from having more than one Superman in continuity or, yeah. or, on, or, on, or on screen. So I can hope for that because I still hope for Cavill yeah. to be suited, mm-hmm. you know, to wear the cape again. But we have three Batman currently, so I know. But if they could finish it out in comic form, that would be a, yeah, that would be fantastic as well. Better than nothing. It is better than nothing. Better than nothing, but not as good as a live action Barda or oh, uh, exactly, Scott Free. Oh, man. Big Barda and... Or oh. Snyder's version of the fourth world. And, just that. In general. Just that. Or just... How about from Darkseid's point of view when he's trying to get back to Earth? Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean... Logistics and... <laughs> <laughs> Snyder's Orion. I mean, you know the guy would be shirtless and yes. ripped at some point. Yeah. Jacked. And I would love every second of it. No, I, and I, I don't know about if they'll go the whole way with Snyder's intended three films that he had planned out, but the more the merrier. I don't think... I think the world could handle all different points of views for DC. But I also, live action. I, I don't know if it has anything to do with it, but they must really feel like Flash has strength if they're going to hold on to anything at all. Fact. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm calling it right now it's going to be the best comic film ever made. And the advanced word on it seems to agree. I still say that that looks... The trailer is the most Zack Snyder thing I have seen since the trailer for Watchmen. Mm-hmm. Like, it looked like the color palette... It's dark. It's gloomy. Like the, the lens flares. It's just the posing. It looks like the most Zack Snyder See, thing. I ever. think when it comes out, it's going to be Andy's movie, though. Probably, but I th- I, he's definitely keeping that language, that visual language of S- Snyder. And I mean, there's hope in this because we hope now that all these things that we want to happen happen. So yeah, if we get this and the Snyderverse and Guns Universe, like I, give it all to me. I'm fine. Yeah, I'll take it. I do not get superhero fatigue. Not after these several decades. I figure it would have hit at some point. Yep. Amen. I mean, I remember growing up and looking forward to Batman Forever. Oh, yeah. Granted, yeah. I was 12, 13, looking forward to seeing Nicole Kidman. <laughs> Saw but... it at Southtown, buddy. <laughs> it's it's great. great. Didn't Seal do the song for that one, Kiss uh, in a Rose? Rose. Yes. Yeah. And I will Rose. say that for as terrible as the, the Joel Schumacher movies were, the soundtracks were amazing. Oh, my God. Yeah. He knew yeah, how to make them bang. Uh, that the, 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 uh, track that Smashing Pumpkins had on the Batman oh Robins. Oh, my gosh. The, in his nice. beginning is the end. <laughs> Still the best Smashing Pumpkins song in their discography. And yes. And Alicia least... Thrill Me, Kiss Me, Kill Me. That yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was jam. Meridian Chase. Was that her name? Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, no, but I, it's, it's my one hang up with every Batman film since Batman Begins is that uh, they can't get the cape right. Yeah. Yeah. I need, I need the little uh, little scoops on the bottom. And I will counter it with Keaton's half second intro mm-hmm. when he slams with the cape. Yes. There, and it's back. Yeah. yeah. I agree. And yeah. then. I don't. I don't like. Is. I don't hate Ben Affleck as Bruce Wayne I, I or loved Batman. Him. I loved it, uh, Ben uh, Affleck. Yeah. But the the costume. Was not my favorite. Well, I know it's not the most practical, but I would like to one day see a damn McFarlane cape. Mm-hmm. Come on, just one, just one um, frame. Just shoulder like one, talons and all. You have fifty feet long, yeah. blowing in the wind, no, with um, lightning in the background. Yeah, 
Come on, that's what I, I, I think want. Last week, Clay Mann was on uh, Twitter and he drew in the uh, infamous uh, Dude, uh, uh, like, Batman. I, I found out. Yeah, it's his leg up, holding yeah. one side. Dude, that is like one of the funniest things I'd ever seen. <laughs> yeah, Bruce, what's going on there, bud? Yeah, but Batman live action has never been cast poorly. No, no. No matter what you think of the Batman and Robin, George Clooney would have been an incredible Batman. Yeah, well, he'd have been a very good Bruce direction. Wayne. Yes, he's. I don't he's know if he's actual Bruce Wayne. All that charisma. He's actual Bruce Wayne. He is a billionaire, so I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just start some tequila companies, yeah. and there you go. And, um, movie. So. The other piece of news, I'm sorry, to move this along because we got to get to the big meat and potatoes of this because we've got a lot to talk about. Mm. Uh, the, the the second piece of news kind of leads into the rest of it, and that was Tom King being announced to do a ongoing series again. So he's doing Wonder Woman 800 Wonder Woman. leading into a reboot, Wonder Woman number one for Dawn of DC by Tom King. And I... This is the best news uh, I've heard in months, comic I mean, wise. I... Because we're going to talk about it anyway. I read, I had just read Supergirl, and it is one of the best titles. It's one of the best books I've ever read. And I know that sounds, it's, it sounded weird. I, I had very little hope. I knew you liked it. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, it's going to be good. But something in my mind was like, it can't be that good. It's a Supergirl title. Yeah. However. Yeah. It's a lot more than that. Oh, my God. It, and, and we had talked about this last night or the night before, where some of the best things about it are that it doesn't take place on Earth right. at all. You know. And yeah. Supergirl, for, for and granted, I'm only halfway through it at this point, but yeah. uh, she's not the narrator. No, no, no. no. And, yeah. that, and that was another part that's amazing. The narrator is this woman with this great vocabulary and this great prose, and then... It's it's hysterical. Ruth is like some thirteen year old girl. Supergirl's like fuck. Yeah. Fuck this. Fuck. Fuck. fuck." You really really like this fuck? Yeah. No. no, um, Which is a line from the book. Yeah. You really like this fuck? Yeah. I know. Uh, No. (laughs) I was trying. When she's like, "I'm proud of you. You Used it properly." (laughs) She (laughs) finally says it. (laughs) Yeah. But I was trying to describe the book to my wife last night. Like, what's so interesting about the Supergirl book? And I told her it's like it's true grit. Uh, with Haley Steinfeld and um, um, Jeff Bridges. Jeff Bridges, Bridges. thank you. And I was like, oh, yeah, that, I mean, yeah, uh, Supergirl for all intents and purposes, correct me if I'm wrong here, to the point where I'm at in the book, is Rooster Cogburn. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Jaded. Um, Jaded, just like like you said, (laughs) all this happens because she wants to go to a planet where she has no powers for her 21st birthday to get... To get drunk. Smash. And she gets shit faced. It's her in crypto in that yeah. first. It, oh, it's crypto. So the, That's some hard strings, man. It, yeah. It's it was crazy cool though. I mean, the the introduction as far as the narrator, I really it, it's it's not one awesome female character. It's two. Like yeah. I love Ruth just oh, as yeah, much. Yeah. Like Ruthie, her, yeah. Yeah. She's just got like <clears throat> yeah. The way that it's the way the narration goes, for those of you that haven't read it, I, at the end of this, I, I think everybody probably will. Like To tie that back into the whole movie thing, this is one of the films that is going into the gun universe. Mm-hmm. I think it is going to be an amazing book to do. Like, oh, I know. You it's... can do it in two and a half hours. You can. It's a spectacle. It's heart. It's every, it has everything all wrapped Nothing into one. And they already, on they already mm-hmm. have all the most beautiful art they could ever hope for so inside cool. those pages. And and Shane and I were talking about this before, Andalee, but the art reminds me of um, illustration from, like, the early 30s. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's got the Art Deco. It's got the Art Deco style. And King's uh, uh, definitely a fan of the the history of DC. And Bill Cui Everly does the art, and she is uh, a superstar in the making. I can say that. I like the idea, though, of a Supergirl story where Supergirl has to be convinced to do the to, to save someone has yeah. to, and, and it lost me. I'm like no, but then but if you but, but if you read to the end, play I was like I see exactly where mm. she was right there. Yeah, and but if you but it, it's a it's a spoiler for you. But if you get to the end, she explain it explains what exactly happened. Oh no, I read it's fa- no, it's oh. fantastic. I haven't. I know yeah. that's what I'm saying. He hasn't read it yet. No, the oh, and Ruthie, Ruthie reminded me of like when you read stories of people that came from nothing and became like titans of industry. Mm. Yeah. Ruthie is the perfect person for that because she is, she doesn't stop. She is one. She has one goal, and to see that goal through, and she is just un, she's a legitimately a rock farmer. Yeah, yeah and, legitimately and, a rock farmer. And, 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 and in comparison to the, the rest of the the characters from her planet and her own family, she's very articulate, has yeah. an extensive uh, um, vocabulary, but doesn't know 
doesn't bathe on a regular basis she and has never washed her hands. She's from a backwater. She's a like literally a rock farmer, so yes. So I have a question for um did you think it was fun? Like I loved the narration, the aspect of it where she would talk about things and touch on it like well, everybody knows this. Like everybody's worldly and everybody understands all of this stuff. But for those of you that don't know, and she just touch on it a little mm-hmm. bit, like yeah. I loved that voicing as far uh, as the, and then she'd always underline it with the actions, like the actions that she took were in, yeah. in the panels and yeah. stuff. Yeah. But. It, it was like taking, it was like as the, uh, the narration unfolded, it was like, it, I, I read that as like another super girl, uh, legend in the making, right? Like yeah. countering what, what happened, like th- things will be told about this. Um, I also think that, um, her and Supergirl are perfectly matched characters because they both lost so much. Yes. So yeah. much. And this girl is still fighting, and now Supergirl will be coaxed back into to the fight in her, in her own right. Um, like, the issue, we talked about this, where she helps the uh, woman bury the bodies, Supergirl. Dude, and I th- that was amazing. And thinking about that and everything that Supergirl goes through in this whole issue, it's like she has to have gone through this 100,000 times before. No wonder it's got to wear on you. Mm-hmm. Well, because they... The thing I I happen to love the pacing on it because it gets to a certain point and I don't I really don't want to ruin it for you but there's a certain point in the where the story stops and then there's one entire issue where it just focuses on Supergirl and like what happened mm-hmm. before mm-hmm. and it and, keeps I'm sorry it keeps trying to it keeps trying to misdirect you a little bit like I'm no longer she could one part she's like I'm no longer uh, part of the story and then it goes to the Supergirl right. background but then she's it's so it's it's it. It is so. I in the last week I have written a lot. I've read a lot of Tom King. I did Mister Miracle. I did Heroes in Crisis, and then I did Supergirl again. And Mister Miracle is one of my favorite books of all time. And Supergirl is I I cannot get it through my mind whether it's better or worse. But I don't. It doesn't matter because we're lucky to have it. Yeah, it is that good. And this is the guy coming back to coming to write Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman. So I am. <laughs> I have not. I have always liked the Wonder Woman character, but I've not liked a lot of Wonder Woman runs. No, she, she's hmm. she's been bereft of. She's had like four or five great runs in an eighty year history. And when you and think I've been of waiting her, waiting years to like get on yeah. going again, get excited about Wonder Woman. And when you think of her, you think of her as part of the Trinity. So you never really think of right. her singularly. Right. You think of her with Batman or her as Superman. I feel bad though because I was bagging and boarding next week's books and it was seven ninety seven, and I wasn't thinking about that issue nope. at all. I was like. Well, Three more. Count yep. down. Yep. <laughs> so it's like, I mean, um, so no. Which is ironic because it's no like, Clunin's yes. writing. But. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Clunin's writing it, and I'm still like waiting on the count. I'll say this about it. It has beautiful covers. It does. Yeah. Mm. Well, um, wait till you see next week. So. But, but we can't. I, I'm, I'm for once in my life excited about Wonder Woman. Oh, I can't Woman wait to start a Wonder Woman coming. ongoing. Yeah. I don't think I've picked up Wonder Woman on a regular basis since the new 52. Brian Azarello. That's yeah. what I was going to say. I haven't Chang. done it since Rebirth. And all rebirth was was retellings of her, like it was legitimately like she fought Panther or it, it just was everything that's ever happened before, but it's it wasn't nothing exciting or new. No. And then I mean before that it wasn't good to, before Rucka in the early two thousands, yeah. and then not since I think George Perez. Oh, yeah, I was going to say yeah. if you think of Wonder Woman, you think of the eighties Perez covers, mm-hmm. or you think of and those, those, those are those, are, those are the first ones to come to mind. Yes, yeah. exactly. But then there's no substance to really follow bef- behind because there is an unfinished J. Michael Straczynski run in the late. 20s, I was about to and mention I that. Yeah. that new New Fifty Two uh, put a stamp on. And then in the sixties, I don't know did, when did you ever read when she got depowered it with uh, Denny O'Neill? Uh, yeah, yeah. And then, they, and then they put her in like fun costumes, and at some point she was a race car driver. Everything you want from a <laughs> Wonder Woman comic. Yeah. I, I love those comics, but. They they don't work anyway. That's why I think Tom King's going to write a great. Uh, <laughs> but, but we love this book so much. We have and yeah, Supergirl. Yeah, won't it tomorrow? When's the uh, final order cutoff for that? <laughs> oh, for <laughs> Wonder Woman eight yeah. hundred. Uh, it's going to be about a month or so. Okay, away. we got time. Time. Yeah. Well, I'm saying we love Supergirl so much that uh, we bought a bunch of them. So if you guys want some Supergirl, this yep. is your place because we will hook you up. And in keeping with the, the the it is a magnum opus. Supergirl it encompasses everything about the character that you you want and that you love. And because of that, of course, you get her boyfriend, Comet the Horse. Oh my God! It wouldn't be a Supergirl story without it. It it's, but you kind of just it, gotta, gotta care for that spoiler. It buddy. is it is ridiculous. But oh, they wouldn't. It wouldn't be a great Supergirl comic without. I know. I, I was no, you, reading you it. Throw it in. I was reading it, wondering like how he's going to work in. I know Tom King is a huge fan of these old comics. Like, how yeah. is he going to work in Comet? And then he did. I was like, oh, that's how you do it. And that panel too. I was oh. like, what? <laughs> it was. It was great. I loved it. And it, it was ridiculous, but not in well, a way only Tom King could have done. It was. It's. It's kind of a fantasy book. But it, at, at no point does it feel like a fetch quest. No, right? No, right? No. I mean, it's it's all. It feels like a learning. It's it feels a strong like, narrative. 
Yeah, it feels very, like a, very... a it feels like a learning adventure where they're out to define who they are or they find themselves again, or at least especially mm-hmm. for Ruthie anyway. And it mm. walks the line where, I mean, I feel like I know Supergirl, right? But I saw a different side. Like, I, okay, I feel like I understand the end product of Supergirl, but this got you inside the head of Supergirl to yeah. the point where you're like the motivations and stuff. Maybe you just. I know very much so that her background is not Cal's background. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. And, and yes. nothing. There were alike. no Kryptonians to com- right. in the comic to compare her to or for her to compare herself with or any other heroes for that matter. Right. No. And the way they retell her story is fantastic. Is fantastic. But fantastic. Like, I got to hit on it again. This book and Tom King in general has the art makes or breaks it for me a lot of times. Absolutely. Yeah. And there has not been a Tom King production that didn't have the most amazing art available Mm, the hall of famers come out for him i mean mr miracle was so beautiful and then the nine panels were amazing Mm -hmm. yep Mm -hmm. i mean uh heroes in crisis was so like harley clay man speaking of harley and booster both were drawn so well and the art was so great and then and then wait till you get to human target oh i know oh man i'm I'm gonna read it when uh, when all of them come Mm -hmm. out Mm -hmm. but then we get supergirl which is just it's it's a, it's like a psychedelic Art Deco style yeah. because That's, the color palette is very psychedelic, but it it is so beautiful. And the, and the starscapes, especially the second issue when they're and this isn't giving anything away uh, when they are traveling yes. uh, on a on a greyhound in space. Yeah. Uh, no, there's one panel in particular that that really cements for me um, who Supergirl is. Uh, as someone who hasn't really read the book that uh, read the character that often, yeah, yeah. Um, because she's been canceled over and over again, and they really at one point she was a, a changeling, yeah, uh, she was the, the, dead for a good fifteen years, yeah, exactly, fifteen years. Yeah. Um, when uh, Ruthie asks uh, Kara, like, "Have you ever wanted revenge?" Yeah, um, mm-hmm. and she's like, "No, I haven't," and that's just like. Have you really though? <laughs> yeah, no, like no, it, it, like like you know, for having all the same powers and uh, DNA and evolution as as Kal El, um, this is someone who didn't grow up in Kansas, no, who didn't, nope. doesn't nope. have that Not worldview, who all. who has to struggle with wanting a uh, fundamental. They're the same symbol, yes, with the completely different actual motivations and in lifestyle, yeah. and it's like. Because she's what she's what his cousin basically. She's cousin, yeah. she's because uh, because their their fathers it's her were brothers. Dad's, yep, yep. Because it was Zorel and it was yeah. Yeah, and her mother was uh, it, depending on the continuity, uh, um, some sort of military leader figure, mm-hmm. politician. Um, but yeah, here you, the story starts off with uh, Supergirl uh, going on a bender on her twenty first birthday, which yeah. is awesome. Traveling weeks to do so to do to depower herself to get under a red yeah. sun. Yeah, and uh, can you imagine Clark uh, no. on his twenty first birthday? No, oh no, he was in by nine. <laughs> He's Absolutely. like, well, you know, Ma and Paul. Just, Ma, ma they, made him a pie, and he flew back there. They went to, <laughs> you know, Jonathan was like, seriously, Clark, go have fun. Quit calling every hour. We're, We're fine. fine. <laughs> no, they they met at Chili's is what they did. <laughs> they right? And then because, you know, they, they, want some, they want to have some Mexican food or yeah, something yeah. like that kind of mentality. And would have been. His, yeah, he, but Kara. And even though this was like a great woman's empowerment mm. story, mm-hmm. it, it comes down to girls and their daddies. That's what. Yeah. The end product, what it was. So it's, it, it's, it, it's it, a part of it. Yeah. It, hit, it, it, it. Maybe that's why it, it's better for me because I got girls. But um, it was just it's just a beautiful story and a beautiful tale. And I does Tom King have daughters? I, I think he has boys. Really? I, yeah. The, I he might have one daughter. Okay. Should I be the oldest? I know, I know he has two sons. Yeah. And I'm not. I don't want to. I feel like he. I don't want to spy on the uh, ex CIA operative too much. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if he's willing to uh, put it on Instagram, I, he, 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 it's yeah, it's been yeah. verified. I'm just saying. I'm going to be even more shocked if he doesn't. Or I want to know how he was able to capture that. I mean, maybe maybe it's because I'm a, I am a boy and I'm just like, oh, this is a good perspective of what a girl yeah, would think yeah. even though he doesn't have that perspective. But it could have been something as simple as his wife lost her father or something. Something like that. maybe. But it, but whatever 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 the incident was that started this, it it I, is it has grown into a beautiful pearl. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I want to know if uh he went after Wonder Woman or if they came to him and Asked him if he'd like to do it. Well, when he comes on the show, we'll we ask, will him. ask him because he did. He's done a Superman and a Batman. Yes, imagine. And then Heroes in Crisis covered just about everybody. He did Mr. Yeah. Miracle. <laughs> everybody gets a human target. I'm like, yeah, 
he's he's getting all the big ones, and I think. But every every time he, I don't mean to interrupt. You're fine. Every time he does one, it's the most poignant thing. It's oh yeah, generally mm-hmm. a way to look at the character that I like, had before. It's a, like his Batman run was fantastic, and we've talked about this where we don't know how much the studio stepped in, but it felt like they watered his work down a little bit. But uh, everything he touches, I tend to like. Yeah. And every, if, every, he gets on base for me almost every time. Yeah. If you've been in the store and, and if if you listen to us and if you've ever read anything that we've recommended and you liked it, this is the same Supergirl's thing. in that spot. Yeah. Supergirl's in. And, and I will be looking for Bill Quee, Bill Quee Evely's, whatever she's doing next, and oh. forevermore. Yeah. It was oh, so good. I was going to say, um, the, the style in this book doesn't seem like it fit perfect, like, I know they're doing a great Gatsby book coming up, but like, Ooh. don't you think it would be well, I like was thinking, this art style? The, the, the way yeah, because the Art Deco, yeah. yeah, 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 phantasmagoric, and that would just yeah. work. Can you imagine I, I agree. These, these splash pages splash. Well, can you imagine a I Green Lantern? A Green oh. Lantern would be great. Yep. Can you very, imagine? Very Tom, cool. I want a Tom King Green Lantern because I would a- love a Tom. Alan King. Scott or uh, he'd do Alan Scott better, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think oh, better than yeah, Hal. Yeah. Because how uh, I would take whatever I could get. Uh, yeah, in fact, <laughs> you're right. But I, I don't know now because he drew uh, super. I mean, he he wrote Supergirl as somebody that you would view as safe and drew her kind of made her kind of wild. Yeah. So I mean, I well, guess, so I guess was, like and that, she was wild until you read the book and then you realized that she needed a, a relief valve and mm-hmm. that was what she had to do to get it was fly halfway across the yeah. cosmos. <laughs> and that's what he was doing with Chris Chance too and Human Target and yeah. all those other characters. Kind of like you think he's undermining them, but no, he's just showing a different perspective and it works. Um, the only time I think that didn't work was with his Adam Strange, which is mm. the only one I don't like of his. But everything That's, else is fantastic. I, I feel the same way. I, mm. th- I just could not Rorschach care. Rorschach for me. I could mm. not, well, Rorschach too, but I could not care. Uh, I could not get into it and Mr. Terrific did nothing for me in that run. It just didn't. Oh, no. I, I like, Mr. Terrific was the part of it that I liked, um, but I finished it and it's like, no, that, no, you took it too far. Yeah. But anyway, Circling back to James Gunn and this new, yes. you know, we're, we're getting a film adaptation yeah. by, by all accounts. Mm-hmm. Who would you put behind the camera and who would you fan cast as Supergirl? <laughs> I cheating. I want I want Patty Jenkins another shot. Mm. I want Quentin Tarantino to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if I'm being honest, uh, Denis, Denis, Denis Villeneuve, Denis Villeneuve Denis or, uh, or or Christopher Nolan. Yeah, jeez, um, Casey Lemons. Uh, Sophia Coppola, Lynn Ramsey, uh, were be my three off the top of my head. Um, Denis Villeneuve, I just want to do everything. I know yeah. that's where I'm at. That's, yeah, I just Actually, know that I, I something want... like this would be visually. Yeah, you and, would and pick to it. play her, since uh, if if they don't have her play Emma Frost, uh, Sydney Sweeney would be a great. Oh, star. yeah, that's so good. Yeah, uh, I was thinking. Um, Lily Reinhardt from Oh uh, my gosh, uh, Betty yeah. Riverdale. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, but uh, behind the camera, uh, Bryce Dallas Howard. She has oh, done, great job. Would She's do great. done yeah. the best episodes of The Mandalorian. Yeah, actually, you so. know what? I think Lily Reinhardt's better. That's a good one. She's got that sweet. Right. Uh, yeah. Um, Sydney Sweeney knows more than you. You can just tell. Yeah. She's just. She's. I think that Sydney Sweeney would do a great uh, having seen her in Euphoria. Like uh, um, if they recast a younger Harley. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. She she yeah. can play play kind of fun and comical and ditzy, but yeah. also well. Since we're talking about female, you know, who my I fan cast it as Harley. No, Mia Goth. Oh, there it is. She was fantastic in X. X. Did you see Pearl? No, I haven't yet. <sighs> okay, Man. I haven't seen either. Not either. Fantastic I. movies. I've seen a picture, but I have no perspective on he's, it. So. He, and he's finishing oh. his uh, um, trilogy of that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, she was also in uh, Suspiria. We were talking about yeah, that she was. Yeah. yeah, wow, that's fine. But she was in a, a movie called A Cure for Wellness. A, okay. A Gore Verbinski $40 million horror film, and it is amazing. With uh, uh, and, DeHaan? Yeah, yeah. yeah. America's sweetheart, Dane DeHaan, <laughs> international superstar. Who would you, uh, who'd you cast as um, Ruthie? Oh. And then Crypto. Who would you cast as Crypto? Chris Rock? I'd go to Central Casting was, for Or The Rock? Girl. Is that who he was? <laughs> Or was it Ace? I forget no, who it was. Uh, uh, Ju- no, she's she's aged up. Uh, Julie Butters, who was the little girl in uh, Once Upon a Time in um, Hollywood. Oh. Would have been great. The one that uh, is sitting next to Cliff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, yes, read yes, the book. Yes. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But she's aged up now. I just saw her in The Fableman, so. Um, I was just joking about the dog. I was That was a, that was a League of <laughs> Super Pets joke. You that was a completely very ignored. good film, by the it way. It was. It was like very film. good. Um, so... So, wrapping that one up, unless you guys have anything else about Supergirl, 
I mean, do you want to talk about anything about the movie aspect or anything? No. I, think I do hope on. that she's in the red headband at some point in the movie. Mm. It was, yeah. I mean, that was pre crisis, folks. I, th- well, I'm sorry. I do have one more question. Do you want, uh, do you want like beeps or do you want it to be like rated R? She actually talks the way she does in the book. Oh, R. R? I'd yeah. want a PG 13. Because you want people to see it, right? I want four quadrant. I want the, I want the beeps so girls can see it. Right. Young girls can okay. see it. Okay. Okay. I mean, because you, you know what yeah, they're you know what they're yeah. saying anyway. It doesn't yeah. really matter. But I want the I want I want it as broad as you can because I think this is a story for the ages. Especially, mm-hmm. It's a gir- especially for girls. It's a that's no, where no, I'm no, at. Yeah. As it's much a, as I'd like for it to be that gritty raw thing, I think mm-hmm. if you could a larger audience is important. Yeah, for the kids, for yeah. the kids, for and the then we have something's killing the children. We do for the kids. Speaking for of. the kids, that's our other title. We're uh, we're 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 leaning into today, and uh, well, Craig, take it away. <laughs> yeah. So again, another title written by uh, it's James Tinian. So it's not female written, but uh, the main character Erica Slaughter is very 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 strong character. Mm. Um, like instantly. So anybody, you know, if you've come into the shop or if you've heard us talk at all, like I'm a huge, huge, huge fan of this book. You got me into it. Yep. Same. That's how we met. Oh, wow. Yeah. All all three of us then. So (laughs) I know. He's he's our pusher. Um, Tinian, so please hop on the show. Seriously, Craig pulled up and he's like, hey, kid. Hey. Hey. You know what's killing the children? (laughs) Something. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> just open this, just a bunch of copy, bunch of variants. It was like, oh man. And for, and for those of you that don't know, like they haven't read it or anything, it's the, a basic synopsis is monsters are real, but only children can see them unless you were attacked by one as a child. And well, yeah, or well, they have the blood of that they can. There's all there's different methods to basically you can be triggered, but basically it's that. Monsters are real and only children can see them. And what's still ambiguous to me, maybe you guys can solve this for me. Yeah. I don't know if it's because only children can... Do children conjure them or do they just exist out in the world? They exist. Somebody has... I think think it's because children are innocent and they have no no veil over the world. They, They see it as it is. I, yeah, I, I think they exist. They're I not was a child. Because of I know they exist. There you right? go. <laughs> Jesus, that's people who get how scary childhood is. Always make better authors, and yeah. I think Tinian mm. does well. And I've I've heard interviews with Tinian because he does you know the Razorblade magazine. Like he's been a mm-hmm. horror f- mm-hmm. fan like his whole life, and um, the way he describes it's cool. Like he likes the way that like he doesn't write. I'm typically like I'm not into horror comics. Mm-hmm. Like I, I understand that there's good ones out there, but some people like that like love that stuff. Like I like. I'm more of like this is more of an X Files type thing than a horror type of thing, in my opinion, and that that is right up my alley. I like a little bit of mystery, I like a little mm. bit. I, I'm fine if it's dark out. I like woods, you know, right. all things like that. But Erica is not unlike Supergirl in the in in the comic as far in attitude. Like, oh yeah, she has a moral compass, but she's been around the block a few times. She's Tough. Cynical, yeah. yeah, she's cynical. She's just got. I just like let me do my thing and get out of my way. And pretty much the same backstory. Not an entire planet, but <laughs> but no. close. Yeah. Um, and eyes that would make a um, a manga character. Yeah, blush. Right. Yeah. Beautiful. I big, love them though. Big ass, beautiful eyes. I love those. Uh, the, the the design of the character and the art works so well. And another one. There's another book where the artist and the uh, writer stayed on pretty consistently for every issue. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that only that always makes it stronger. In, well, no, for this, for something, it is 100% of the time for all the interiors. He's a yeah. co-creator. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So the, I mean, obviously everybody's seen it enough to know. It's one of those things where I actually looked at the numbers and I've been wrong. I've been telling people wrong all along. The actual print run on number one was like around 33,000. I thought it was lower than mm. that. So it started at 33,000 and then it dipped down to the level of about... 11 to 12,000 around issue five and six. Mm-hmm. And then we're currently looking at it. It's about 120 to 150 consistently. See, and I was that guy though, because I th- then I, I would have read it in the trade the first time. Right. And then I jumped on it and pretended I'd always been cool. So <laughs> <it's okay. laughs> you got to do it sometimes, yeah. right? Well, I'd always been cool, but I wasn't always reading that. Yeah. So well, and, and having just recently, I, 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 I picked up the Dalek's edition because I got a gift card. And read it, and then uh, a couple weeks ago, you guys were having a, a fifty cent sale. Yeah, and I picked up a couple issues 
they I mean, beat the heck, but fifty cents each, Can't good be, way to hop so and hop good way on to read it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, then I picked up uh, the fourth trade um, because that takes you up to sixteen through twenty. Yep. yep. And then the it, fifth trade is downstairs. Oh, is it? Yes, it just came in. Okay. It's usually the first thing I read on my poll when it comes in. Yes. Yeah. After Fantastic Four, after Daredevil. For me, it's, it's oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, but trying to find uh, issues sixteen through now thirty, yeah, Ooh. has been real hard, a little rough. It's uh, it was. I'm grateful for not having to track any of that shit down. I mean, I I was one of those where I had on like I had three copies of one when it came out. I only had two, but then I had the frozen cover. So yep. Mm. <laughs> well, that's, the, that's what happened. So that's, I that's how we met. Back. That's how we met. I bought his frizzin. I never had a frizzin. I've had the a covers, but, um, I pretty much, I sold two of them and that paid for the rest of the books, probably through the end mm. of the series because, nice. but you don't understand he, when he says the rest of the books, he means store exclusives and expensive yeah. ass books that he probably yeah, bought. Cause from. they were at the one point when I sold the other two, which I don't know if I'll regret that or not, but it was at the peak up to this point. That's you know that's two grand on a on a book that came out in 2019. Yeah, there's no other that books like crazy. that right now. Yeah. So no, there's not. I think the, the only book in my collection, uh, even remotely close to that, was that uh, Action 242 that I sold you guys. Um, or Brainiac. Yeah, yeah, that's going all the way back to the Silver Age. Yeah. Um, and it's then so beautiful to sell so well like that, you have to go back at least 30 years. For well, no, you know, it's so about a, once. Least. It seems like once a decade, there's a book that hits that everybody's trying to find. Like Miles. Like Miles, but and, and just and just saga. like well, okay, and Saga and like Saga and like Miles Morales, this book didn't catch on until yeah, it was seven, took a little eight bit of months time. later. And then with the case, the case of Miles, it always surprised me as I bought my Miles after the cartoon came out. Oh, and I paid sixty dollars for a nine point six. Jeez, and then like it was still another year almost before it exploded. Okay, yeah. and it's uh, I think it was a high of about twenty two hundred, and then a low of like eleven fifty or something like that. Now, are you talking about <clears throat> excuse me, Miles Morales number one, or are you talking about uh, the Ultimate His Comics first appearance? Ultimate okay, four. got it. Yeah. Oh, you know, uh, so, C two E two fame. Yeah. That book. <laughs> now downstairs uh, on the wall behind the register, there are two issues of Something Is Killing the Children. Yes. Yeah. Uh, which uh, which there's actually three. There's more. Three. Yeah. Okay. Which issues are there? Are they? Those are three and four for the regular A covers, and then the one next to that is the one in one hundred for issue twelve. Or uh, it's the it's the one that's the Department of Truth homage. It's the third rarest okay. cover that exists. Period. It was like twelve or eleven or yeah. I'm trying to. It's eleven, I think. And, and all of this is because Erica Slaughter is god tier, incredible character. She absolutely is. Yeah. And the design is so iconic already with the. Uh, the kerchiefs, right? That, that the thing is, everybody houses. wears them, but nobody looks as cool as Jessica. nobody looks. As no, cool as not it's Jessica. I said Jessica. Um, I meant Erica. Yeah, it's coming. The, the 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 ponytail and the um, eyes with that something about it, and the, and then the tank, the the just the wife beater. The wife beater just, oh, we're not saying just, that this episode. <laughs> something yeah. about it just works, though. Yeah, it's or, episode eleven, or it's I'm sorry, episode. It's issue, issue 11. eleven, number eleven. Yeah, we have okay. on the wall. Um, like her cape is a tank top. It's awesome. Oh, yeah, and she's up there with like uh, Ellen Ripley. Yes. Or um, uh, I almost said Jennifer Garner from Alias. <laughs> what? <laughs> if I you're mean, of a certain age. Well, yeah, but you could. Yeah. Any James yeah. Cameron movie you can yeah, pick. Absolutely. <laughs> For sure. And that's it. That is all the strong <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh. You could, you could tell this is a podcast with four what white guys. guys talking about <laughs> women. Yes. No, I Linda Hamilton playing Sarah Connor. Sarah Connor. You know, there's, there's, there's Ellen tons Ripley, of which them. Which is from yeah. me. Yeah. John, but, John yes, John she's really, in that yeah. category where it's like something new. It's not like a superhero book. She's not super powered. She's just mm. badass. Yeah. yeah, she's just badass. Like and She's very good at killing she monsters. Takes, she takes care of business. Which Buffy Summers of uh, the 2020s. Yeah, pretty much. Mm. And much. there's now she's doing it on the run, yes, without any Done. any monster killing resources. Which I was no. gonna say, another cool thing, another cool element of this book is her first like opposing big bad that's not a monster is another female. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so yeah. it's like there's no weird, you know. Yeah, the voice has been true and the same, and I think he's done an excellent job writing those characters. My my second favorite character in the entire book is Jessica, and you don't see yeah, a whole lot yeah. of her, but she's done enough in the book to make me love her. Yeah, and I refuse to believe she's dead. Oh no! Like, I, I I I 
and I want we knowing that we have another 55 no I'm sorry 45 issues left in the story mm -hmm. there's still some time to get some Jesse boy boy to see him an epic yeah and then so long story short the most reasonable way to get this book now at this point is the trades but the deluxe version has the first 15 and the trades are the way to read it anyway he writes back. them yeah he writes them in five issue arcs but so far, what it's looking like is his actual stories are 15 issues. So yeah. the deluxe edition is the Archer's Peak Saga. 15. And then 16 through 30, which we're rolling up on next month, is going to be the next arc. And then they will release another deluxe after that. And they're kind of 15-issue stories with five-issue arcs with like a month or two break in between mm -hmm. cause just because he's working on so many damn books. Yes. Um, which I want to break in real quick. If you have liked any of his titles, if you liked any of his work, whatever he's doing, uh, World Tree, number one, comes out yep. in about six weeks, I think. And it is set up exactly like, or not exactly, but similar to Something's Killing Children, where it's going to be 75 issues. He's doing five issue uh, five issue arcs. Yep. He's going to do a, a, a short break after every 15 issues. And he's going to release them just like this. And there is still time, if you've got a poll or whatever, to add it to your poll. It's and this weekend though, right? Isn't yes. It? The FOC for it is this Sunday. So I put it on mine. To ensure you, know, you want to get the cover you want, throw it on there. I pulled the Friesen 10. We'll see if that works out. So did I. Yeah. Because uh, it's it it looks like it'd be a fantastic book. It looks like it's like I loved Clear. I love something that's killing the children. Like character design is kind of like a cyberpunk yes. looking Erica type yeah. thing, right? So I mean I I'm just pretending in my head here, right? I mean, yeah. it's a lot more creative than that. I'm just I'm not creative. But no, it, it's, from what's been already released. About, right, yeah. yeah. Well, but like the Blue Book and Closet, they were shorter uh, yeah. title book runs, but this one has... It's another the, ongoing title. This one has the legs to go. Uh, and, nice House was 12, yeah. Yeah. Yep. But so World Tree is... And like we've seen the intro art and stuff, and it's fantastic. The it story looks is good. looks great. So I'm just... Breaking this in real quick to try to sell it to you because it looks fuck. They just uh, released the yeah. one in seventy five Momoko cover yesterday. Oh my god! Yeah. That's, that's I mean, in a sea of Momokos, it's probably one of my favorites. Oh, it is. And I like the one that uh, does the uh, manipulates the first something is killing the children. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. Awesome. yeah. Now I will say, if if you're trying to find it on League of Comic Geeks, uh, it is three three. Okay, it's spelled. Yeah, it's spelled differently. No, no, it's spelled W Z O yes. zero. R L D T R three 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 man. I just went to Tinian's page and found it. <laughs> so did I on, on League. Like <laughs> yeah, but if you're on League of Comic Geeks, it, any spelling yeah error, it yeah, comes, it if you just it, it'll exactly. throw it off. Yeah. So yep. it's W zero R L D T R three three. But um, briefly to take it back to something that's killing the children to kind of relate it to how we did with Supergirl is that has been announced as a Netflix series and the people that were doing Dark. And that 1899, 18, oh, 18, so yeah, whatever, 1889 or whatever that show was. The other ones that those people had done um, are doing it. And that, I mean, it's not like the complete story, but I enjoyed both of those shows. It has that darker tone. But this and it's cinematography, kind of cinematography yeah. is nice. beautiful on both of the movies or both of the yes. The properties shows. and uh, I'm I'm very excited. It's going to come down to casting uh, of Erica this is, for me. This is uh, I this is like 90. percent Yes. This this is on par with like getting. Well, I, I won't spoil it because it's, she's my number one. But certain casting, you just have to nail. Yes. yes. And that's going to get all your goodwill or not. And yeah. I think there's already, you know, it's one of those things where it's been, it hasn't been out forever, but we're going on three, four years. And you're talking about um, people have been fan casting since day one. I'm sure. And they already have something in their head. And they're like, well, I would have picked so-and-so, but um, she's aged out of it now. You know who I pick? You know who I you pick? Know. And I'm not joking. Cindy Sweeney would be a pretty good Erica. <laughs> Just give her all the work. I, all yeah. the work. Yeah. You know, at first, I was thinking uh, Kieran Shipka from uh, Ooh, Mad Men yes. and Sabrina. Yes. But I think I, on second thought, I was thinking, you know what? She would be great against uh, playing against Tom Holland in uh, Spider Man as Felicia Hardy. We could do this. Right? <laughs> okay. So uh, what? Uh, then I was thinking, okay, maybe what, the actress that played Betty Bryant in those three Spider Man movies. Uh, okay. Ned's girlfriend from the second. I know what one. you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. Oh, um, um, and Jory Rice. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but then I was thinking Amelia Jones from Lock and Key. I've not seen Lock and Key. Uh, it's okay. I read the uh, first season is okay. The second season Netflix has to do some arm. Throw twisting. you away I mean, in the first. Couple I've been episodes. hearing Anna Taylor Joy because her eyes are already the same. Oh size. my! Yeah. Well, Anya Taylor Joy for anything. Yeah. Yeah. Ever. Uh, 
She, Princess Peach. <laughs> yeah, there you go. She, uh, could, she could play Superman in the forthcoming film. <laughs> yeah. I would love that. You're like, yeah, that's fine. That works. Okay, well, then I'll, then I'll say Amelia Jones uh, from Coda. Yeah, the Academy Award winner. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That that fun fact. If you watch that movie, it is just a lifetime movie, but it is all, all ASL. Characters. Take it away. Oh. Take it. Take yeah. It's all ASL. Take it away. It is the most just basic. <laughs> I'm yeah. sorry. No, no, that's fine. I should have asked if you liked that first before I started sitting on it. I've never seen it. Oh, okay. It's 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 not. It's a, it's a very basic. Well, movie. now he's not going to watch it. Yeah. No. Yeah. But Amelia Jones. Amelia, yeah. uh, Okay, actress for maybe a much better property. And if you're wondering she about, would be, yeah. if you're wondering about Seventy Skilling Children, about how it sale, how, how it sells, uh, how many times have we reordered these books, Craig? These hardcovers, the deluxe alone. I think we do it. I think we're we were we we've gotten a lot wiser with that. We were doing them like five at a time, and this is I don't know five or six. I see them seven, five or I see them go down <laughs> less and less each week. Yeah, and come back up. Yeah, and we and we just got a, a giant reorder of these. Plus, we have. All five of the trades. You can right? actually, as of for the one for first the first time. time in the store history, as of right now, if you were to walk in, you could actually read the story up to current. Yes, we have all the so, we, have, we have, which is an accomplishment for the comic yeah, book store yeah, people because yeah. most of the time they just there's a run on them, which it, it they, for good reason. We're, we're talking about this book. A, because it goes with the theme, because Erica is a badass, but it actually is a fantastic book. And it goes in this category too, because every woman that comes in the store that is interested in reading comics or hasn't read comics, we push this book on them. We don't push it, but we suggest it. This is my wife's favorite book. Mm -hmm. My sister-in-law's uh, favorite book. Every woman, I, I never, we've only had one person ever kick back and say they didn't enjoy this and they were 12. That's true. So, like, legitimately. <laughs> Maybe, uh, but you know what? We didn't care because we got his copy back into the used trades. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got some back to sell <laughs> because they move like nothing else. But women, uh, women do very, like we 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 sell Saga to women, and we sell we sell some of these killing children. And this is a book that until that twelve year old didn't like it. Every person we, perfect score we walked out with it, came back. Oh my god, that was so great! What else do you guys have? So. Most of you know this because if you talk to us or you talk to Craig or whatever, we always we always uh, shoot it up. But Sammy's Killing Children is, it's just, <laughs> it's that once in a decade book or once in a once in a quarter century book that just captures everyone's imagination. Has a following for a reason. Yes. And with that, I think it's saga esque in that respect. It's saga esque. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with uh, with zero percent uh, breastfeeding on the cover. No zero. Yeah. Percent. There's a hundred percent more breastfeeding Which, on the cover. Which that, I mean, that's an excellent lead in because this next segment we're actually going to talk about uh, some of our favorite creators, and I think Shane, you have something absolutely related um, to some. You have something saga esque to show. Saga esque. My my favorite my favorite female creator working right now, um, at least on the artistic uh, front. Um, because, well, we'll let you guys talk about that, but that is one of Fiona Staples, the breakout star of the 2010s as far as comics go, I think. Um, she, she's done, she's drawn every issue of this. I first, no, I didn't, not, she drew Archie for a while, and there's something about the art, like, this is, this is incredible. Yeah. You know? And then I was like, oh, that's the Saga gal. Yeah. Mm. And, uh, I don't know which issue it was of Saga where, uh, Brian K. Vaughn also realized that the most fifty five percent of the magic is coming from the art itself, and he started putting her name in front of his because she was the uh, she's the real driving force. It wasn't that long; it was like issue eight or something mm -hmm. or ten. And, and good, good, good uh, for him for recognizing that she. Th this is where the magic's coming from. It's a great story with great characters, but I, it, it should have. She's happened. more than bringing them yeah. to life. And my my only my only limit with uh, Fiona Staples, she does uh, the occasional cover, but. She's so busy with Saga that you know she she hasn't gotten to do much else, and I think she could do anything. I would love mm. to see her do a Justice League book. It, it'd be fantastic. Her interpretation. How of could she get breasts in there though? Any of these characters? How could because she draws a breast in every comic, or she draws a sex. Uh, well, I mean, or, Saga well, just kind of uh, lends itself. Yeah, to Saga's yeah. very sexy. Yeah, um, but the I think the most impressive thing that she's done in the book is actually um, when you think like Centaur, like the remember like. The, I, maybe, I think this is, may have been around where it shifted, where they go to that planet, and there's the, the half man, half horse. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah. But, the, but it, it has that, but the horse head's in, still in front, and it's just dead. <laughs> yeah. It's like yeah. a skeleton. Uh -huh. It's very uh -huh. visually like, 
that's 100% her. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Uh, like, Lion Cat is 100% her. Uh, Lion yes. Cat. And what's mm. the... Uh, the Will and his like so, slow weight gain, slow... What's the Spider Woman? Not, the yeah, Spider the, the Woman. The Assassin. Oh, yeah, yeah. The Assassin. <laughs> yep. No, what's the uh, the creature that everybody loves that we... If, if they kill him, we're going to... Oh, uh, it's something that's spelled in a weird way, but it's... But also nice. adorable. Um, um, and then and then uh, Marco and her and then and their kid and then now she they've oh wait yeah you can't get too it, far in that yeah it, it's when it came back it was just as great as it's always been um, Fiona's art is better than ever and I think she's I think she's one of the best artists working in the game or mm-hmm. maybe ever right now I I maybe am ever period the only thing that is disappointing I, you've already touched on it is I I would love to see her do something mainline just mm-hmm. for a point of comparison yeah. And I think she could. Do, I think like she can knock a cape it out. book. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Imagine her drawing a Green Lantern. Yeah, knock I mean, it, out the park. it would be fantastic stuff. But we don't get it because we don't deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go with uh, the the uh, the powerhouse that is Jenny Frizen. Mm. Mm. This woman, every with Peach Momoko or Alex Ross, I feel like um, their their greatness is watered down by how much you see of them. No matter how much I see of Miss Frizen, I do not get tired of her artwork. She yeah. can't mess up and look bad. No, 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 she can't. Her first cover art was Voltron, a legend of the forged. It was a variant. It was a store variant. I know it's weird. Her first commission piece from a from a publisher was actually Hack Slash number 14. I have it. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Tim Seeley? Yep. Yes. Yep. Cool. Indiana's own. Yeah. That's awesome. And she... Oh... She's she's got a type of book though. I mean, I, I, well, she did Harley. She does Death. She does so many women well. And I'm not I'm not saying this in a bad way, but when she does like on the Grim covers when she was drawing men, oh, yeah. mm-hmm. I didn't like it as much. No, yeah. it's no, not because no. it's well, not because of any perverted reasons. Like her stuff isn't like sexy always. It's just that she's just better at drawing female anatomy. I think. I know this can be a strange uh, uh, comparison, but uh, we were talking about this earlier about how uh, when she writes. Draws female characters. There's just something a little extra there. That, but it's not anything that is probably conscious. And then, um, so I'm going to take it's it. Sensual. Shelby Foot Civil War uh, narrative. Is what <laughs> they, they, he he is the most objective objective historian. But they said that when um, the um, when he writes the Confederates in battle, because he's a he's a um, from Mississippi, said you can feel his heart beat a little bit faster. You can. But, there, but mm. and I feel like that's what it is. Like you can't quite put your finger on why her why the women are so much better. There's uh, there's a little uh, soul there that's not well, and I like the consistency because when she did Catwoman, it was like a run for a year. Yeah, and you could always count on that Friss and B cover, and then she's doing the same. I don't think she was on it. She was on it before, but she's back on Harley now. Yeah. And I know there's a run of Harley covers, but then she does Poison Ivy. Yeah, she's done the Poison Ivy covers, and then um, something is killing the children. Famously, the B yes. cover of Number One. That's how we met, and it's it's a beautiful cover of Erica. That yeah. one where she's got the half the blade yeah. across yeah. her face. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's yeah. just her Poison Ivy covers. Yes, they oh, are gosh, insane. Um, and I invited her to come on the podcast. The um, the best example I think of like uh, like the, if that. I'm sorry. Can you pull that, pull that one back out? Because I think. The reason why it's so unique also is I don't see that and only see Harley. I also see Uma Thurman mm. in that particular one. But it's not like everybody looks like Uma Thurman. Yeah. It's like she puts like a little touch of like, mm. you the know eyes. who this is. And it's not like. Well, it's like she, is she, it's, it's like she fancies someone and then she tries to make them into that character without putting right, them. Right. Into that but character. you know how my, my big gripe with a lot of artists that are really good is their faces look the same. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right. Like I mean, our germ, our germ, every female face is exactly the same. Every male face looks the same. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yeah. So it's like, it, it, it's a style that is kind of transfers. And I feel like hers, her faces are like, she understands and she, right. She might pick a different model. Like this one, I feel like is Uma Thurman, but I feel like I have seen one where she's done like a Margot Robbie, mm-hmm. but it still looks like her own Harley. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, that's well, why I mean, plus and, you can see the line art come through. Like you can see almost I don't know if it's like an like a three D like a X ray version of the of the art, but you can see the, the outlines. You can you can see the work that she put into it. Yeah, it's fantastic. I mean, I would love to see. Uh, oh, she also did the uh, that facsimile for Red Sonia from the yes. Gail Simone. Oh, and stuff. Mm, she yeah. did all the Red Sonias. She, she did she, the, she did every issue. She did, she did the, every. She did, I didn't even know that. She did a cover for every issue, and they are all that good. She That's did awesome. That death that you love. She did. Uh, the, the one uh, the, in 100. The one in 100. 
The first, um, the first variant I came here and asked for. The first book that I had to tear in half. Mm. <laughs> oh, jeez. Because it was damaged. Uh, Nightmare Country. Yes. That one? Yep. yep. By Tinian. Yes. Let's bring it all back around. Another one. <laughs> it's all connected. We have not let you talk at all, man. What no, are your no opinions on Jenny Frison? Uh, to be honest, outside of the something covers, the, the B covers, I, I'm not as familiar. Yeah. So oh, this is, I, I'm the everyman on the other side of the, the, the microphone. As far as the world learning. about to open up for you. As far yeah. as the cover only um, her and Jen Bar- Bartel's stuff really mm-hmm. stick out to me. Like she's been doing the She Hulk covers, the Jen Bartel, yeah, the Jen Bartel yeah. stuff. And fantastic. Another, they are those are two of my favorites. She did some black cloak covers that are yes, yes, nice. Some fantastic, fantastic mm-hmm. work. Um, and then as a side, you know, it's about it's International Women's Month or whatever. It's uh, Jan Bartel draws the oh no wait, she's the one Jeff uh, Decal. Yeah, dang it, I was gonna say draws the best Psylocke ever. No, it totally doesn't it. count. No, it's fine. But Jen Bartel does dry. I, I like. I follow her online. We were talking about the online stuff, and Bartel's a lot of fun because she actually posts stuff she's working on. Yeah, which I, I love it when the artists actually. And it's not because it's, it's just for fun. You know, mm. she draws a lot of Final Fantasy VII stuff. Oh, just for right? her. Yeah. So like, there's a lot of cloud and Tifa work and stuff, and it's like a, it's always a trip to see like what she's doing and she's always like constantly talking about it and kind of like just i don't know if she, she's not even workshopping because she's fantastic she's, no it's, it's finished product did, did anybody pick tula lote Mm-mm. okay good because no. she does that too and it's awesome she's like some slice of life stuff then yep. uh, she'll draw the gorgeous most gorgeous cover you've ever seen so it's cool for sure stars they're just like us they're just like <laughs> us do you want to who do you who do you who have do you here? Yeah. Oh, I I didn't pick uh, a, a comic from downstairs, but uh, Louise Simonson. Okay. Oh my gosh! There you go. Uh, okay. Vastly more talented than her husband. Wow. <laughs> okay. I will say that. No, no. I believe it. I mean, I love Walter Simonson. His his run on uh, his, Thor. His Thor is one of my top five comics. Uh, and uh, his Fantastic Four run. Yeah. Is up there with Byrne. I. Mm, yeah. High praise indeed. Indeed. I like his fourth world run. Oh. But his wife. Yes. Louis uh, Simonson. Yeah. Or uh, her husband. Wheezy. <laughs> Wheezy. Uh-oh. <laughs> no, I didn't realize this until uh, uh, I was reading an article uh, just last night that uh, she was basically fired off New Mutants because uh, she and Rob Liefeld were not getting along. Mm-hmm. And I was like, mm-hmm. uh, well, I think history will remember that differently. One gave us Deadpool. The other one uh, edited the best years of Chris Claremont's run in X-Men. We've talked about it. it. She was kicked off because it was an extreme. Extreme. That's why Warlock. Bob Harris had two hands out the door. Warlock didn't make the cut, but Boom Boom did. Oh, jeez. Um, anyway. Do you know what the first things that she wrote was? Uh it wasn't Power Pack. It was, yeah, it was Power, Power Pack. Pack. Power Pack. <laughs> nice. And it'll yes. make a comeback at some point in time. Yeah. There's one downstairs. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> not for long. <laughs> it never left. No, I, uh, I didn't realize this until I was reading last night that she uh, she was the editor on the X uh, titles mm-hmm. uh, during the Claremont and Byrne era. Mm-hmm. Yep. So she went from editing uh, the Dark Phoenix saga. Uh, Days of Future Past. Yeah. To then writing uh, the second arc of X Factor onward, to then New Mutants. So everything that made they were great. They were just as good as what was being written by Claremont. At the oh. Time. And th- I've heard stories of her, her Anna Cinti and Chris Claremont in a couch in the Marvel offices for days, just coming up with these insane ideas. Yes. And um, Inferno was one of her was sort of her idea. Yeah. Yeah. So. That's got to be a lot of fun though. Like when you already know your book is. You know, X-Men, oh, yeah, your book yeah. is done. You're like, do whatever what else want. can we do? Yeah. I mean, yeah. that would just be... And, and the fact that she had her fingers in, like, the biggest stories of the X-Men franchise yeah. in the late 70s, early 80s, and then propping up uh, the books for their height in the 90s, mm-hmm. and then going on to do uh, editorial and one of the Superman books for uh, Death of Superman. Yep, she yeah. Was, yeah. 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 I've seen interviews. She was in the room with Jurgens she, and them. She's... She's fun too. Yeah, like if you like watch interviews and stuff like that. that, Yeah, yeah, it's uh, wonderful. Her her and Walt, the way they interact, it's it's great. And and I want to piggyback on that because Anna Cinti at the time was doing superlative work, and then she jumped to Daredevil and had an amazing run. Mm. So just to be able to hang out with those guys. But anyway, Craig, what is yours? Do you have one? Yeah, I have one. Well, let's hear it, buddy. (laughs) Tons of them. But I only get to choose one, so today I am choosing 
Joelle Jones. Miss Heck Joelle Jones. The cat. The, because then I'm going to put another Joelle Jones. The writer, the artist, the one and only Joelle Jones. Um, so, first, as far as accomplishments go, uh, the only female artist to do the art on the mainline and a ba- ba- uh, mainline Batman title. Joel Jones. No joke. No joke. Wow. I mean, it's sad. Yeah. But I mean, that's terrible. <clears throat> but my, it, it, my, it is terrible. Yeah, absolutely. It is. But my favorite thing is that she did all of the work on yeah. her Catwoman yes. on the first what fifteen issues, fourteen. Yep. Which the, right. they're they are the prettiest Catwoman issues I have ever seen, and they are um, the interior art is all that. Yep, yep. it is gorgeous, phenomenal, and phenomenal. And the story is great. Oh my god, well. it's it's a compelling Catwoman mm-hmm. story that. And we just it, it's, it's all abs- deal was law. It deals with loss. I'm sorry. Yeah, but then yeah. So because Catwoman picks up after issue fifty, where they didn't get married. Batman. Mm-hmm. Spoiler alert for anybody that hasn't been reading in the past however long. Sorry, it's been. <laughs> they didn't get married. <laughs> it was on CNN. They should know. Yeah, read your damn comic books. It's not <laughs> still my, my chance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, she's just a unique talent. Where I think every single time I see her. Her artwork, I'm like, yeah, this is her at her best. And then I show you what I showed you on my phone today, mm-hmm. which is and so. It's next Lady, level. Lady Killer was yes. a creator owned. It was on Dark Horse. It's actually being turned into a Netflix show. Um, Blake Lively is going to play the main character, and it is a very cool premise. Mm. Um, it's about a like 1950s housewife mm-hmm. where she's pretending to like go to book club and do these things, but she's actually an assassin. When her husband leaves for when work her husband for leaves day. for work for the day, she's like an assassin, and it is incredibly fun time. incredibly gory like it's not one note like it sounds it is complex no. and like yeah. the very opening the very opening panel is like avon calling like type of thing <laughs> right <clears throat> and then it ends up like a fight in the kitchen where someone dies with the end of a, the business end of a high heel yep it's just so much fun like and i read it and i was like that was my first exposure and i just it just kept on. That coming. was your first Joel Jones. It was my first Joel Jones mm-hmm. that I actually read, because um, I mean I know she did. She's done a lot of like she's done some interior page and she had done other work. Like it was weird, like not weird, but like uh, stuff that you would just much the same as first and you're like what Transformers. It was something like that. Yeah, yeah. But she mm-hmm. did some interior pages like on Fables, I think, mm-hmm. actually at some point, and then she had done other stuff. But then I, I really caught attention for Lady Killer because it was it was it was buzzworthy, and then she is. She's the entire creation of Yara Floor. Yara Floor. So as much as you've talked about uh, Monkey Prince. I love Monkey Prince. I love Yara Floor. Wonder Girl. I uh, think she's the best legacy character it's that I can think of. Fantastic design. Fantastic, like, writing and personality. Like, I, I instantly fell in love. Like, from it was, conception on. From concept about it. Because her first appearance is Future State. When we were doing Future State DC, for Future State 1 is her first appearance. And that's it. And that those first two are so much fun because they are. I love mythology. Yeah, I love mythology, and she's going through like the underworld and all that stuff. That's where it happens. Mm. That's where it starts off, and then it goes to her book, and then she's just like, that was her already being like an experience. An Amazon who's actually Amazonian. Yes. And, yeah. And, but it, not Here's just as a thought. token gesture. Like Joel Jones did the research. She found out what that would look like. Yes. How that would have evolved. Yeah. Stupid subtle things like her mole. Like oh my god! Like it's not the same thing. Like but it's part of the character. It's part yeah. of the character, and I don't know. I fell in love with Yara. I mean, I fell in love with Yara. I was disappointed that Wonder Girl only got seven, but but they Joelle were, was legitimately doing the entire book. She was writing it. She was inking it, and then if you look at her work, like I showed you, so she's doing now. As of now, if you haven't seen much from her, she's doing Lady Killer Ink, mm-hmm. like Incorporated. Okay. Um, and she released some pencils on um, the Zest World, which is which part we can subscribe to her. I, I suggest you subscribe because you're going to get the digital issues and stuff before there's a release. I imagine it's going to be much like the Snyder things going on, where it's going to be some digital, and then Dark Horse will end up releasing it mm-hmm. or something like that. But if you want to support her now, you can get on Zest World and do so. But she sent out pencils to the people in the newsletter, and I don't know if I've seen anybody drawing at this level 
period. Like, and that's what you showed us before. That's what I showed oh, you before man. on my phone where it showed yeah. the, the birds and then it showed like that farmhouse. That was 96 locomotive. Jordan. That doesn't what even need color. That's, that locomotive? Yes. Yeah. It was. That's ready for print. <laughs> it's it's dumb. Ready for color. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> we. Or you can leave the color out and just. Eh, you know, eh. It was. I don't know. But Joe L. Jones, I quickly realized the immense amount of talent and I have nothing but respect for everything she does on the page and words and draw, I mean I a different level I feel like I put her in like a I'm gonna say it again I put her in another Mark Russell thing where I think she's accomplished stuff it's just like he's accomplished things but not nearly as much as what they should be doing or how no, how, no, yeah. how recognized they should be yeah. they're, they're way underused they have a long future oh and, absolutely and they're very the bright. government should mail each issue for comics to like suburban households so required everybody gets one yeah like and then her story is so cool like she got into it like her brothers were into it she had older brothers and she like i have a younger sister she did not care about my comics at all and joelle <laughs> jones did i don't know i'm just saying i I, yeah. I put that in my own life and it's one of those things where she was getting them after they had used them up and she so she was like she started with like punisher and all these stupid mm. like Ugh. not you know what I mean? Stupid macho boy books and yeah. stuff like that. And then she took all of that and just made her own style. And I will say to this day, and this is for Brad who's listening, who gets a kick out of it every time I say it, Joelle Jones can draw a fucking horse. Joelle Jones. I was, was going to say that. Horses, yeah. are, horses are hard to draw, and Joelle drives them the best. That's just how it goes. She put them in Batman because she can draw a horse. She put them in Wonder Girl because she can draw a horse. That cover. And I, variant and, cover. And I respect the fact gonna, that she knows she can draw a horse. And I will say, going forward, I hope. Um, I, I think the her Monkey Prince and Sojourner, um, the Green Lantern are are my favorite uh, new additions to canon, and I hope they're at least getting their due. But Yara, I, I just hope she becomes like I, a major driving force. I think she will. I hope so. Like, and I hope what, Joel gets to draw her again. Yes, and you know what a dream for me would be hmm. if they did like a Teen Titans thing and they brought her in. You oh. know, who, you know another teenage hero that would be great. Monkey Prince. Monkey Prince. Imagine Holy those two. <laughs> Holy. And Red Canary. Wait a second. What? We're on to something here. All right. We're going to call DC after this. All right. Yeah. So our, we're going to move on and we're going to move into a, a subject where uh, we're all going to pick um, three or we were going to pick three of our, our favorite female characters. Did you want to cut that down for time or you want to? We could name our three. You want to say you go it on? one is our favorite. Yeah, we can. We can do three, but then we can just describe and go at length with one. I think okay. that should work just fine. Okay. Steve, you want to you wanna kick it off for us? All right. Uh, my three. Uh, Ahsoka Tano. Nice. Excellent. A excellent Padawan choice. of... Yes. Uh, Anakin Skywalker. Anakin Skywalker. And a Padawan uh, of none as well. Yeah, fact. Uh, <laughs> most likely. Probably the, the, the great... Mm, my second favorite Star Wars character. Uh, um, anywho. Uh, behind you. Behind... Uh, I just want to say... Jar Jar Binks or... I was going to say is, Cassie Nandor, but... Yeah. She is the best addition to canon outside of the six films. Fact. Yes, best thing Dave Filoni right. has done to date. Yes. yes. Uh, uh, so Ahsoka Tano, and then second Erica Slaughter. Yep, nice. Uh, this Good generation's dress. Buffy. This generation's Buffy. Yeah, uh, nice. the, uh, I guarantee you, my nieces are getting uh, something that's killing their children for Christmas. Uh, <laughs> nice. Yes. Ooh. Uh, and, that. That's good. That's good. Right. Yeah. Uh, and first, uh, you got to go with the the first uh, family of the Marvel universe. Uh, everyone's mom, Sue Storm Richards. There you go. You know, and, and Shane and I were talking about this before. And uh, Ryan North is killing it on Fantastic Four. And my, yeah, my number uh, five from last week. Sue uh, is not playing down. Uh, it, it's not a stretch for her, no pun intended, to. Oh, no, intend uh, that awesome <laughs> pun. That was great. <laughs> to translate for Reed, mm -hmm. uh, and especially in this latest issue. Toe to toe with yeah, him. Exactly. She's translating for Johnny and Ben and the rest of us public school kids uh, <laughs> yep. <laughs> what Reed is thinking and how he's going to solve the problem and how that family is going to hold together uh, as all families are held together by, or at least in my experience, uh, a strong mom. Mm hmm. Yep. And uh, Sue is... Uh, and, and not to identify her just in regards to Reed, but think about that. Like T'Challa, yeah. maybe Tony Stark, maybe Steve Rogers. Um, they killed my um, mom. And Hank Pym can like talk to Reed and, like, with, any, with any authority. Yes. And Sue Storm. Yeah, and right. She, she doesn't get the credit for that. No. And, and, and so I kind of segue, not segue, but a tangent to that is that uh, I was talking to my, uh, my nephew last night about uh, Black Panther. 
Yes. Loves the movies. Mm-hmm. Uh, looks up to T'Challa, my son, who was the, this blonde haired, blue eyed, Aryan, <laughs> uh, freaking loves T'Challa. He cried when Chadwick Boseman passed away. But he's oh. like, you know what? Uh, he's like, Dad, uh, T'Challa is as smart as Tony Stark. But he wasn't like that in the movies, but sure he is. Mm-hmm. Like, well, Shuri is also a strong and powerful woman. Speaking of that, my niece was Shuri for Halloween. Was she really? Yeah. Speaking, so, yeah, yeah. It's cool that. I mean, I love how that change. I mean, it was cool as far as like, uh, yes, the, the intelligence and all that stuff is there. Like, that was my favorite part. I guess what I'm trying to say is encourage people to read the books because a lot of times the movies don't only tell half the story. What they do is they mm-hmm. take somebody that has all those characteristics and you get to explore and that and they aspect. split them into multiple mm-hmm. fact. Um, and know, characters. props to Byrne for, for giving her. Yes. Expanding her character and her power base. And, and for a few issues there during his run, uh, even putting her in the, the sexy costume oh, yeah. and having yeah. that uh, kind of alternate personality. Uh, like, yeah, you're, you're, you're playing to the archetype I of what not, everyone wants. But plain. yeah. And yeah. thanks for the idea about giving um because my niece actually does kill monsters. So to have a book about it, she right? would love it. <laughs> my uh, my nieces are both. Uh, uh, it, college students and they, as liberal as I am, they, they they make they make me look conservative. Mm. So <laughs> the last thing I think that their grandfather wants is uh, some ideation of nice. strong, empowered women uh, making their own choices, killing monsters. If you can piss off some boomers in the in the yeah. process, yes. absolutely <laughs> making Christmas weird. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Shane, okay, Let's do it, Shane. Um, I'll just rattle off a few uh, honorable mentions: Starfire, uh, Fairchild from Gen Thirteen, uh, Cassie Hack, and my fourth favorite X Man, Dazzler, did not make the top three. <laughs> Catwoman did. Um, Catwoman's uh, a good choice. Black mm. Canary is a uh, ooh. This was a this was a close run for first, um, but it ended up being um, mine. My beloved Zatanna. If I knew how to say like amazing backwards, I would do it right now. But I didn't write it down because I just thought of it. Um, <laughs> um, created by Gardner Fox, the legendary Gardner Fox mm. and uh, Murphy Anderson. Uh, in 64, 1964, she premiered in Hawkman 4. Because whenever you think of Zatanna, you think of Hawkman. Which, no. <laughs> just because I'm, I'm proud of you. I, you, you have this. I have, you actually, uh, you have Hawkman 4. It's a nine graded, but it, it is restored slightly. But it's gorgeous, gorgeous. It's First appearance of Zatanna. Book. Yeah. It's awesome. Should have brought that. But I mean, uh, Matt, you, we, we talked once like, do you think if she was in a live action movie, they'd put her in the top hat and fishnets? And I think that she is such an amazing character that, yes, mm. I think she could pull that off. I think that I don't. I can't see how they would do that as a she is there wearing that the entire time. Not the entire time. I no. think it'd be like a gag. It'd yeah, be like exactly. She, I think she'd, she'd be, be like a, on stage. A magician's assistant. Yeah, yeah okay. on stage as, a, as an assistant, and then but, that's what yeah. how you see it. This then, this this woman though like hangs with. There's no there's no magic user in the DC universe as powerful as she is. She can go toe to toe with Doctor Fate, you know anybody but the Spectre. But like she's hanging on a daily basis with Constantine and Asher again. And she's still she's not as jaded as them, even though she's oh, no, life. not at all. Um, and she does it all. She keeps the forces of evil at bay, and she does it in a top hat. There's something. Do you remember how happened. terrifying it was in um, an Identity Crisis? That was oh when I first gosh. realized oh. the mind wipe stuff. Yeah, I was just kind of like, okay, I yeah. felt bad for Zatanna. her. Yeah, right? just this is gonna this is gonna like mentally stay with you for years and years. Sorry, I didn't mean to track you off your thing, but I just remember you were talking about power oh, levels God. and things like that, like. She's like, you're, they're like, yeah, you should just do that to Batman. You're like, you should do what to Batman? And it's like, no, because she's still, she's still a sweet person. She, yeah. but she does, if she has to be, she can do uh, what she has to. Um, the one of the best things she, I've ever seen her in was um in the books of magic in the early nineties. Yep. There was an arc oh. around Constantine has Tim Hunter, mm-hmm. the the, mo- the most powerful canonically mage in the DC universe, and he drops him off. He has to go do something. He just drops him off at Zatanna's house in San Francisco, and it's like, could you watch him? And she, <laughs> she like thinks to like, he's a he's a dick. Tim Hunter is a, I never liked that character, but uh, she's the one that, like thinks to give him breakfast because mm-hmm. it's like, you've been hanging with John Constantine, right? Here, you, you probably haven't been fed in days, and like she's very kind to him. Here's a like, protein yeah, and a fruit like, and yeah. a vegetable. And it's, it's just it's great. It's Z. The the only person that that can uh, humanize Constantine. Which is saying something too. Yeah. It is because yeah, they are very good. I want to. I just want to. I just want to see the two of them on the yeah, screen together. Yeah. And if and if they ever like and that so that's what I was going to say earlier. If, if there's no casting that needs to be nailed more in history than Zatanna being perfect. Yes. Mm. And I'm hoping. I think we'd said it before, but I'm hoping that Gunn's working towards a Justice League Dark. Uh, absolutely. absolutely. Well, they'd already. Hope, they'd already. Hope, 
they'd already announced that before like last year they announced that they were they were they've been working out. on it for years and hopefully they use a uh, del toro's treatment because i want to see uh dead man on screen fun fact did you guys know that i have a dead man dead man number one first, first appearance. appearance sorry first i mean appearance. Yes. And, well, and number one strange adventure and a hawk man and a hawk man and a uh, zatanna i wish i had hawk man's first appearance <laughs> be a rich man <laughs> that'd be great yes it is but so anyway. matt matt okay okay you're your folks okay so I don't think I can quantify how I feel about these three, but I'll go over them. Uh, first, we got Death of the Endless. Excellent she, choice. Nice. She is Dream's sister, and she first appeared. Sorry for Ooh, she Yeah, first, buddy. Look at that. She first appeared in. Sorry. That's she first f- appeared in Sandman number eight. And. Uh, Get the hair off. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm just. She is Put my greasy fingers on it. Oh, you're fine. The first time I read that, I remember thinking, oh, my God, I was in love with her. And it wasn't just because she was a little pixie chick and that mm-hmm. was kind of the thing. But um, the way he wrote her, the way uh, Dave McKean drew her, the mm-hmm. way Neil Gaiman wrote her, it was just it's a magical combination for me. And then like you wish you was your sister. Who better, yes, who better right? to help you cross over, though? Yeah. I know. Oh, oh, that. oh, I know. Yeah. Not an opposing dark figure. No, but... and that was that was like that was like one of the most humanizing and sweetest things, too, is like. She takes everyone and she tries to do it with a smile and she yeah. tries to be nice to them because that's all that she's like, that's all they need is a, you know, a friendly face. That whole sequence with the footballer. Yes. Uh, that's uh, one of my I, was, I was really kind of afraid how they were going to pull that off. Don't mess this up in the, the, the adaptation. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the adaptation, the only thing I think that was missed out was when she takes the baby, <sighs> when she takes the baby and the baby's like, that's all I get. Really? Yeah. I wish they would have left that in the adaptation. I wish the baby would have spoke because that was, I think that was poignant because she's like, sorry, sweetheart. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. sorry. Death, the high cost of living. Yes, yes. And then, um, so that was August 1989. And then Carrie Kelly. Which if you know Matt, universally will say is his favorite Robin. It is my mm. favorite Robin. Can be argued. Yeah. Uh, she appeared in Dark Knight Returns number one. Frank Lynn and, or Frank Miller and Lynn Varney in March 1986. And, uh, through all the Batman books that I've read, and which is a lot of them, she lends the most humanity to Robin, I believe. Mm. She's the only one that actually sought the title out. Drake. And, oh, that's Sorry, right. I'm sorry. Is that, there's a, I'm sorry. Just got to give Drake some credit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I will say that, that, that Drake had uh, a, a little bit of... His, it was like an obsession. Yeah, as far, and yeah. his background wasn't as rough as Carrie's. Oh, no, no. no, no, no. He had a loving father and yeah. everything. Huh? Uh, up until, well, Carrie's you know, up until identity <laughs> crisis again. <laughs> Carrie's thing, I think, was out of boredom, though, because her parents, were they weren't bad parents. They just were neglectful. They yeah. just were more important. They were just checking... The, Ah, the 80s. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> he just kept lifting her, lifting her spinner racks and stuff. It was weird. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait a second. <laughs> and then um, I do not have her first appearance anymore because someone bought it. I am the proud owner. Sorry. It's Big Barda. <laughs> Ooh, a big, great character. Big Barda. First appearance is Mr. Miracle number four, which I say Shane bought from me. Uh, we have Jack, bonded over Big Barda. Oh, I know. And then Jack Kirby did the art and wrote it. It was from September 7, 1971, and I've always liked that fourth world stuff. I've always Love it. Liked, I'll hail the king, baby. I've always liked Jack, the art style, but something about Big Barda, I don't know what. I mean, she's the gentle giant kind of until she doesn't want to be. Yeah. And, and she doesn't fit like the traditional physical norms of no. superheroines. No. Foot and a half taller than everyone. Oh. But Tom King. He did. Oh. Killed it. They nailed it. Yeah. Bringing it back. They nailed it. So once that, again, that relationship with her. Read the Mr. Miracle. I read Mr. Miracle at, at, a, at a real dark place in life. And um, my wife was trying to figure out how to like connect with me. And I was like, please read this book. Yeah. Wow. And seeing how Barda was being sympathetic towards how Scott was feeling. Like, Superheroes indeed. Superheroes yeah. indeed. I loved the dark sense of humor they both had. That is awesome. Like, remember the scene <laughs> where they're in the car and there was like the. They have like, the tape they were listening. Yeah, they're stuck yeah. in traffic and they're listening to that tape. Isn't it like the the sound of torture, like in the <laughs> yeah? Well, because <laughs> it's because it's the last night he ha- he thinks yeah. he has, and they're yeah. they're stuck on the ten, <laughs> and because they were arguing before about like taking the surface so, streets or getting a boom tube. As much fun as that was, just to let you know, to try to push you even more for- towards it, like uh, in Human Target, the relationship between him and Ice 
it's, oh, yeah. it's, 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 it's gonna, on par with it that. that. I'm yeah, going to read it. I'm just going to wait until it comes yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm just so saying, like, if Barton's you loved Scott, it, it's that same way. Barton and Scott's one of the strongest relationships in the DC universe. They were also in the um, great Maguire, Damon Teus, Giffen run. Yes. My favorite Justice League run. And to your point, though, about you and your wife, that's amazing. And they say not all heroes wear capes, but most of them do. <laughs> the really good ones <laughs> do. Yeah. No, that's, that is, that's, that's Barton, pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. And we will continue to talk about Barda. Yes. Until we get her in live action. Yes, yes, yes. To bring it back to our original yep. announcement. Plus, an um, honorable mention would be Granny Goodness. Yes. Mm. Who raised yes. Big Barda well, and Mr. Miracle. We got to see a brief glimpse of. We just, got to see her for one just half an enticing second. second in the mm-hmm. Snyder Cuts. As voiced by Danny DeVito. <laughs> <laughs> no, It'd be a great. She looked like an That's aged awesome. up. Uh, she should be the first Red Tornado, Danny DeVito. She looked like an aged up. What was uh, Brianna Tarth? What was her? What's her name? Oh, uh, Gwendolyn Christie. Yeah. yeah, she looked like an aged up Gwendolyn. Which Gwendolyn Christie could mm. just play her. Period. Yeah, absolutely, I would love that. I, so yes, but that's It'd be awesome. That's those are my picks. What are yours, Perfect. Craig? Okay, so <laughs> take us home. Well, I have number. I guess I won't number them. Well, I, I will. Whatever. Number three, I've got Lois Lane. Nice. Mm. Um, first appearance of that one here. I t- <laughs> yeah, couldn't, couldn't put it out, folks. No, I'm just, I was thinking really hard about it, and I was like, if anybody, I mean, she's royalty, right? Yeah. I mean, yes. <laughs> yes. She, she knows the Kents. Yeah. She's, she's the daughter in law of the Kents. That, yes. At this point, she knows Superman's secret among the small circle. The man that, can do absolutely anything chose her and it's mm-hmm. for a good reason i've always loved lois the way that she's been depicted as far as like she i love lois because even before they killed him off i knew that lois is the type that would be fine mm-hmm. and she would be the person where she'd be like i lost him but i didn't even know him as long as the kents like you know she would be visiting the kents you know if if she could be writing out, writing out to Krypton, she'd be she'd be the strong one for them. Mm-hmm. And every single time she's in a story, it is depicted like even this week in Superman Lost, the first half of that yeah. book with the dialogue. I love Lois Lane, and I I love the relationship. I love I love that she gets Clark, and I love that she is selfless enough to give the world Clark. More and more in the last fifteen years of comics, reading her, I it seemed I, I've had this thought. More than once, she chose him. Yes, mm. it's inc- like that's inc- like. Well, I was gonna say the so most amazing good. thing about her is she doesn't let him get in her way. Yeah. Oh, she not at all. is a she is <laughs> she's ruthless when it comes to stories. She's ruthless when it comes to her career, and she doesn't have time for his shit a lot of times. But I was, say, yeah. well, but I was also gonna say, well, I was also gonna say, yeah, she's won a bunch of them actually. Mm-hmm. Um, that she in Tom King's run, she knows who Batman is. She knows Batman's mm-hmm. identity. Yeah. She knows. So she's a she's a. She's up there. That yeah. double date was a phenomenal. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah, it's a it's Tom Craig's, King fish, Craig's f- a favorite, favorite here at the arcade, <laughs> dude. It was a very good issue. And I will say that the uh, Amy Adams in the the oh yes. in the second movie, especially w- uh, in the director's cut, yeah, uh, when she's b- at, held at gunpoint, mm-hmm. like that scene sold me on Amy, Amy Adams because yeah. she smiled at him and she just did this, yeah. So she wasn't hanging onto the guy's arm, and he just like murdered him, <laughs> knowing that Clark's going to be there to catch her. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. or uh, yeah. Well, she has, yeah, yeah. Uh, but also, so I, awesome. just, I love that pick because if you think about it, uh, from a historical perspective, to that point, uh, they were just broads and dames. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. If, you, if you're not super powered, you're not well, a character. Hell, she was for about forty years. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Lois yeah. Lane and friends. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and, and Margot Kidder and oh, uh, the, yeah. the the best. Yeah, it's fantastic yeah. stuff. So I mean. I, I've got to give. I wasn't planning on going on and on about Lois, but love Lois. I've loved casting most of the time. They do a good job. I mean, I think it's always been a strong character. Like yeah, even, even hear, in Smallville, like Erica Duran. Yeah, and Amy, Amy, Amy Adams is beautiful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, wow. I heard in Superman Returns there was a Lois Lane, but I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Take that, Warner Brothers. It was Kate. Wah, wah. Actually, I don't remember her name. Okay, the yeah. Kate. One of those Kates. Yeah. Uh, Bosworth? Bosworth. Yeah, Kate Bosworth. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Lovely person, but now you're throwing me off. That was your second one. Great. Um, what was my second one? Now I'm. Did you write it down? No. Oh. <laughs> what I... That's preparation. Jay Z over there? No. Yeah. Um, I talked about it before, so I'm going to send a 
gloss over this one. It is Yara Floor. Mm. Very recent. I love her character. Like She's fun. She's fun, fun, tons fun. Tons of fun. It's like the Wonder Woman elements that I love, but also I'm I get to like grow up with her and you know, Wonder Woman's poor before my time mm. and it was still it was already a legend at that point but Yara's like our very own like you said she's your monkey prince for me yeah, yeah. right but you it feels like you could it feels like you could point any girl at her and that girl she's relate because she's she related. could relate she yeah. could relate to Yara floor and it, it would be a you know and she's fun like the first ep, the first issue even of her book like she's like on a bus and then she's like up front and she's just like talking with like the she's talking with like the bus driver mm-hmm. And they're like kind of like flirty back and forth. Like I think the whole thing was working towards like they were going to get each other's number until something terrible happens, right? And then she's got to go into Wonder Girl mode. But it's just very like character driven. Lots of fun. But uh, we've already kind of talked about that, so I do have to move on for the sake of time. And my number one is cliche as hell, but I love Harley Quinn. Wow. I grew hey, up. I picked Zatanna. There's no. I, but Harley Quinn didn't even start in comics, right? I mean, yeah. my love but- from that is. I made sure I watched animated series when I got home from school oh. and nothing else mattered. And that she showed up and I'm like, that's a lot of fun. And then Batman Adventures 13, she showed up in the books. That is, you know, you have a lot of your grails. I don't, we had a Harley in the store, but mm-hmm. we let it go. I mean, Boy. I let it go. It's, it's one of the books I will get as, as a first Ahsoka. Like Ahsoka would be on my list. Yeah. But Harley has been the evolution and I love. And Warner Brothers has, or, DC, they've been smart enough to let her grow. Yes, yeah. they have. They have, they have clipped. They have cut the bonds that tied her down, and they have let her grow. And watching that has been exciting. Every, even in Heroes in Crisis, yep, was was great. But I mean, and it was organic over yes. time. Like her, her, yes, her so getting rid of the now, Joker. I never would have bought. No, three years after but no. Harleen did a lot of work for that. Oh, that was yeah, the best uh, Harley. As far as character like study opinion. goes, I mean, the. The whole thing with her and Ivy, like it is always so much fun. No matter yeah. what's happening, even in the Poison Ivy book, it, it's not it's, like it's a fun book. But when she showed up, oh, you're like, yep, okay, we're yep, gonna have some fun we gotta, now. We gotta break this issue. Yeah. And then yeah. she leaves, and the air goes out. Yep. Just mm-hmm. like, and you feel like it's how Pamela has to feel. Yep. Yeah. And, and the relationship doesn't seem forced. No. Oh, no. It seems no. like a natural, mm-hmm. organic well, growth. Mm-hmm. And you can't say re- that for a lot of characters. Well, and no. it's rewarding yeah. because Harley's entire existence was based upon abuse yeah. yeah and then it turned into this beautiful it blossomed yeah hey. oh. um with poison <laughs> with poison ivy you know in pamela she so those plants i just got it yeah yeah there you go <laughs> a, bot- a but botanist even, yeah <laughs> but even come back to heroes in crisis was like a perfect encapsulation of their relationship or the potential of their relationship mm. because it, it was cool i mean it's Harley's a you know Harley's a, a big lot. girl. She's a grown up now. Tom King wrote about her. I know, know? A, lot, so a lot of people. <laughs> it's like know, there's a lot of guys that want to see her and Ivy together just for whatever reasons. But I think they are they for whatever reason they fit together. They're a DC power couple. It's another point. one of the strongest, uh, uh, healthiest couples in the yeah yeah. And, and that cartoon. Oh my on god! HBO Max is, is everything for me. Oh yeah, Kite Man. man. <laughs> <laughs> and they made him empathetic and lovable. You yeah. love Kite Man, like. You buy yeah. him. You buy Pamela liking him. Yeah. I know it's yeah. so weird. And then you meet his parents, and it was like, <laughs> you guys know Stephen. You know what Kite Man's real name is, right? Uh, I'm forgetting. I'm drawing a blank. Char- Charlie Brown. Yeah, Charlie <laughs> Brown. you can't make the poor guy. He's just a loser. It's he's not clue with, master. With rich loser. friends. Yeah, <laughs> or rich family. I mean, so um, to go back to Harley. I'm sorry. Um, Harley. That's Harley. Right. Harley. Every, Quinn. every Harley. aspect. The evolution of her costume. Like, I think every design has been a killer design. She lends herself to that. Like, the fact that how exciting it was this year when they do Dark Knights of Steel and all they had to do was put her in her very first costume and she fits right in. She's a jester, (laughs) right? And in her book, her solo series that Stephanie Phillips has been um, writing, which we were going to give some props. We we can't name everybody that we love, but Stephanie Phillips has been on Grimm, been killing it. She's been writing Harley. Amazing stuff. Oh, so um, good. Harley's solo book this past year. Um, it's basically Harley going out. You know, Joker wore all that stuff done. She's going out on her own, and she wants to work towards being, you know, viewed as good. And, like, that first arc where she's like, hey, Batman, I, I'm, I want to be, your, like, your sidekick now. And he's like, are you kidding me? No way. And she's like, basically whatever else. It's very Harley, like, the excuse. She's like, well, what if you give me, like, a toaster or something, you know, if I do, you know. 
Like a good, like, it's like a reward, like working towards yeah. it. And then at the end of that first arc, she does something good and she comes home to her shitty apartment. And there's a there's a toaster with like a bat symbol on and it. It is amazing. <laughs> and it's just like, this it's, is, it's a lot of fun. And you know, you can tell it makes you so sad for her because she was on a track where everything was great and then she was manipulated, mm-hmm. which I will also say, Christina Ricci playing her on the Spotify yeah. podcast, mm-hmm. yeah. the serial thing. I think that was fantastic. Again, never been cast wrong. Yeah, well, we cast poorly. Weirdly, the White Knight alternate universe books mm-hmm. have some of the best portrayals of her. Yeah, yeah, she's a, the, the, because there's multiple. The fact that you of can her. interpret her in so many yeah, different ways, um, and she lends herself to that. Like that's how strong of a character is. Her and, and Batman's. Yeah. Oh, their relationship. That was, but like her, like mm. constant, like self renewal, constant self growth, and like you, it's. It's reflected in her design, like is like we're talking about the costumes. So just a variation on it, but it's always something new, yeah. something different. It's like this is awesome. So yeah, I mean, it stuck with me. That that's why I chose Harley. I've stuck with me my entire life. She's always changing, and I think she's grown up with me, and it's allowed me to stick with the character. It's just been a lot of fun. What do you think, Margot Robbie is a? Uh... I, casting wise, as far as looks and playing that Suicide Squad, just knocked out of the park. Specific right? uh, Harley, sure. I mean, absolutely. I absolutely love it. But I would honestly love someday to see a we. You know, we asked the question to all the creator um, spotlight guests, but I would love to see a live action, like actual slow, not a whole lot happens character study type of film, like Harleen, like Harleen, mm. and like as far as showing like. Like they did to Joker, yeah, yeah, for Harley, yeah. Which it might be that with Lady Gaga, with Lady Gaga and Ooh. stuff. But they threw in like the musical element where it might just be like everything is super serious, and then the musical numbers like these fever dream which, type sections, which, which be, is completely fine. With awesome, me. yeah. So I'm like hoping one from the heart. I'm hoping that that's what this ends up being. But I think that's that's my list. That's where I stand. But I had a lot of fun talking about this one. There's been a lot of, uh, and we'd like to thank every woman that yeah that picks up a pen or picks up a stylus or picks up anything because you add so much to the medium that we love and uh or those who identify as women we thank you a lot amen we thank 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 you we've got all kinds of we've got years and years and years of history we wanted to try to do something we covered it guys we covered all the we solved all the problems (laughs) all right (laughs) we've done it but Uh, I think that's going to actually wrap things up for this episode, and uh, we will see you soon. Matt? Coming up soon, though, we're going to have Steve Eric next week. Yep. And then who's following him? We have Miss Erica Schultz. Imagine that. Deadliest Bouquet. She's on X-23 right now and currently writing uh, Hallow's Eve. So that's exciting. It'll be We're actually going to speak with her on April 7th, and it will air the following at the end of that weekend. So on that Sunday night is when it will drop. So we're excited about both of those, but we'd like to thank you again. And once again, please support your local comic book store, local comic shop, because they are not doing as well as you think they are. Thank you again. Goodbye. See you. <laughs>